Thanks for tuning in. You're listening to the Shred Coach Podcast with Tom Adams. On this episode, Tom chats with John Alford and Will Fountain of GreenServe. John and Will share with Tom how they created a shred sales specialist position in their business and the profound impact it had on shredding related sales. You got to hear this one because you will definitely get a return on your listening investment. I am excited today to have John Alford and Will Fountain of GreenServe. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you having us. Yeah, that's John. And uh, Will, do you want to say hello so everybody knows your voice? Thank you, Tom. Yeah, nice to have you aboard. So let's set the context. GreenServe has a shredding business, but give me some big picture details about GreenServe. Tell me about your shredding business and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, we started shredding about 15 months ago. We're primarily a medical waste company. Uh, We started off as a medical waste company and discovered that each of our customers are potential shredding accounts. So we moved into our treatment facility there again about 15 months ago and had been holding off our customers as far as the demand that was coming our way for document destruction. One large competitor of ours purchased another, uh, purchased shredded, and then we started seeing some demand on that. And so we went into it wanting to synchronize, and I'm, I'm over operations and finance and John's over sales, and he can speak more to that. But one of the things that when we went into this is we wanted to call on existing accounts. Um, yeah. We wanted to do a plant-based shred so that we could use our same trucks. We can co-mingle uh, mm. in our areas, uh, the states that we currently cover. And so that's the strategy we started with. Interesting. So you really built this on the back of a medical waste business, but you're plant-based. So you're not running mobile shred trucks at that's this point. That's correct. Okay. It's primarily paper shredding to your existing client base. And we can talk more about how you're growing that, but are you doing things like hard drive destruction and all that other stuff? Or you are. Okay. You are. Okay. We are to those existing accounts and where it makes sense. So we try to be strategic as far as our route density goes. That's one of the things that we really were excited about getting into this as well as it helping our route density and turning over more opportunities in the, in those areas. Once we covered our existing accounts. Got it. Got it. Related, tell me your home city, your service area. Give me a sense of the scope of your business. Sure. We started off in North Mississippi based out of Oxford, which is about an hour south of Memphis, Tennessee. We moved into our treatment facility in Batesville, Mississippi, which is right on 55 south of Memphis 15 months ago. And we started off 10 years ago covering just North Mississippi. We then expanded into West Tennessee and more into Central and South Mississippi, then over into Louisiana. Uh, And now we cover most of Tennessee, all of Mississippi, all of Louisiana, and most of Arkansas. Wow. So recently been in Arkansas in the last 12 months. So you've really grown. So a couple more things about your business before we get into the focus of the conversation is, and I realize this is a co-mingled business with your medical waste, but how many staff, how many team members does GreenServe have? Give me a little bit more in terms of the team, the size of the team, the scope of that. Sure. We were about 15 employees 15 months ago, and now we're in the mid thirties. And that changes sometimes daily with what all's going on right now in the market and growth and everything else. (laughs) Right. Right. Uh, Yeah. Right around 35. Okay. Wow. That's quite the operation. So you've got plant-based equipment. Are are you full scope? So big machine cross cut going into a baler. Yeah. We've got a 75 horsepower Allegheny shredder with the 30 horsepower American baler. That's great. Very cool. All right. So we've got a sense of who you are and what you're doing. The focus of the Shred Coach podcast is really to get into a specific strategy, tactic, tool, or resource you implemented and the impact it made on your business. And I I realize sometimes in having these kind of conversations, I'm asking you to disclose something that's maybe an actual, you know, insider secret. But in doing that, I believe we're all helping each other in this industry. So tell me in your case, What's the thing that you did that you want to share with the industry? What's the implementation, the strategy, the tactic you used? And then we'll dig in on it. Well, Tom, this is John. So from the sales side, we, as Will said, we were medical waste companies uh, started in 2012. And so as we were doing some market research on the shredding side, it it seemed, seemed that everyone that we talked to was more on a pulling side of the marketing. They were Google ads and all yep. kind of lead generation systems, Shred Nation, some other things that are common to the market to yep. bring the customers into them. There's a lot of, you know, in-house calls and all of that. So we initially, to Will's point, at first, when the acquisition of Shredit was done, we had people calling us like, hey, do y'all do Shredit? We were like, no, oh, we don't do Shredit. 
And about the 20th customer that called and said, y'all do shredding? Yep, we do. We do a shredding now. So it doesn't it, take an entrepreneur long to answer that question. <laughs> Listen, it? I'm not the smartest guy in the, in the room, but I'm, I'm smart enough to say yes. So, so anyway, we, we actually initially launched doing that just from a Google ad standpoint and trying to drive it through yep. our website and pulling it in itself. But we just didn't see, we weren't even meeting our budget. We didn't see that type of response that some of the other people that in our, that we had pulled on for information and given us. And so Will and I both came out of the medical device world for more years than I care to tell. Our background in the medical waste sales and then also in the medical device sales is, you know, being in some type of a sales funnel that's dependent on what industry you're in and going out there and being and a, and a pushing and a driving sales and outside yeah. sales. And so in a nutshell, we took, after a few months of trying it the traditional way that we saw in the industry, we took a route manager who had about six months, a young guy, a uh, real sharp, no sales experience, but he had been working for us. He did know the industry a little bit. So we brought him inside and just made him quote unquote, the shred specialist and Interesting. Through, through some training and plugged him into our sales pipeline and in our CRM program uh, called pipe drive. It's, it's well known in the market. And so it's basically a quota every day for sales calls. Uh, it's a quota weekly for the numbers of quotes sent, and then a, qu a quota monthly for revenue and contracts closed. And it's just a system that we've put in place that's worked well for us in the medical waste side. So we do track all of this data. That's been a, the, the key component of it all. But then having somebody who's young and aggressive and he's willing to work hard and, you know, Will and I tell people all the time that come to us, Hey, I'm looking for a job. It's like, you know, you get out of the bed and work, you need to go to work every day. You're going to outwork 95% of the people around you. Yep. And that's what this young fellow does. We did to Will's point. We started with kind of our own customer base. It was around us in North Mississippi. And we only sold to medical waste customers trying to make that route density. And, you know, so everybody that we picked up, we're already there from an operational standpoint. So. If we can add some recurring shredding revenue there, then that just increases the margin on those stops. Yeah. So as we saw that start to tick up the purge business, you know, we started going after some of the more of the purge business. And then not only we expand that footprint, we also expanded what we we're doing from the Google ad standpoint, you know, <clears throat> and try to reach that market that really increased as well. And then got outside of the just North Mississippi into Tennessee as Will, you know, spoke about, and then got outside of the medical only to the non-medical trading world, got it. the lawyers, the banks, the insurance, schools, you know, all of the, the usual suspects and that. And so, uh, it's, we've really, it's really had a big, big impact for us to the point that we were shocked by this, by yeah. somebody that didn't know selling could get in here and plug into this to our system and, uh, just work the program and it worked, you know? And so he, he did a great job. Yeah, let's dig in a little bit because you gave us the reason why you implemented. So it's like there was some degree of pain. You were trying this pull mm -hmm. form of marketing, which is often called inbound, and you're you're right. waiting for people to show up to you. That's the impetus for this. But but now you take a driver or somebody who's worked mm -hmm. operations for you and you put him in an office. Is the first thing you're teaching him to do is pick up the phone and just basically dial for dollars to your existing clients, or is he dialing for dollars to anybody at this point? Some of both. For the, the initially, it's training on the system itself. It's sitting down, getting in, dig, it. digging into the CRM program, so he understands what the functionality is of that. He okay. understands the stages of our pipeline, or AKA your sales funnel. Yep. And uh, understands what those stages are, why each stage is important, and what it takes, how many calls you're going to have to make to send a certain number of quotes to get a certain number of contracts. It's Got just the it. numbers. Will yep. and I both talk about this all the time. This business is a numbers game unlike anything. I've, I haven't ever done anything like this. Mine was a handful of customers that you grew your business inside of a dozen circuits. We have a ton of leads inside. We've called on over 25,000 people since we've been in business in the medical waste space. And so it was working in that, but you know, there's also the non-medical shredding yep. customer. So some of that is his own generating leads and, you know, Googling and, and digging into the outside into that sales arena as well. 
in, in that process, is this person who's doing this only going out or are they also receiving in some of the inbound leads that are, are funneling from a shred only perspective? Well, and that's a good point. That's one of the things that we did and, and kind of his stages, once he got his feet wet, once he understood the operational side of what the CRM looked like and how it functioned. Then all Shred Nation's leads went to him. All Google's leads went to his desk. Everything went to this one Got desk. Got it. And so it made us a lot more efficient. We were probably at about a, I would say a 50% close rate on the Shred Nation's and Google leads. And after he had it for about three months, that, that rate went to 80. Wow. Yeah. That is impressive. Yeah. Wow. I, I can hear what you're saying there. So this person starts to get to know the system, the software, how the pipeline works. They start going outbound, which you got to know your stuff to, to go outbound. But now when you start bringing somebody inbound to somebody who's become adept at going outbound, now they're really efficient at order taking because that's right. another part of the shred business, which is the inbound often is somebody ready, waiting and wanting somebody to shred their stuff today. That's right. That's right. Uh, so is his outbound focused on big accounts or is he going after anything that, that moves and breathes and treads paper? At, at this point, or is his outbound focused on that type of client that is bigger and the inbound is whatever comes? Like, how do you see that unfolding for you? For us, and I and Will could speak to this as well, our strategy on that was more of where it was instead of, hey, I just want a small customer or a large customer because we knew what our footprint was from the medical waste Got side. It. And on yeah. the operational side, Will, they do a great job keeping up with the routing and where our focus is, you know, what we want to do there. So it's more of a uh, geographical than it is size of the customer. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, a hundred percent. The one thing I'll compliment them on is put the strategy together. Here's the area we're going to cover and come to us saying, all right, here's the area we need you to cover first, second, third, and then we start preparing on our end from a volume standpoint, driver standpoint, truck capacity standpoint, all yeah. of these things in certain areas and obviously closer to home is going to make us more money than it is a long way off. So, yeah. So it sounds like it, you implement this shred specialist. They learn the system. They start going outbound. You start taking them inbound and now they get extremely efficient at a certain point in your growth. I can only imagine that person hits their limits. You already said earlier, you've gone from 15 to 35 in the last year. And I don't know where he came in that process, but at a certain point, a person who's doing that, I get the sense that they're going to burst. So is there plans to like duplicate that effort? Is that what you're thinking? Is that the sort of strategy you're taking with it? It is. The plan at the end of 21, the plan was to implement a segue. So as a side note, so that when uh, this thread specialist came on, he had been the route manager for about six months, which ran over to the first quarter of 21. And so he was for really nine months, this all transpired and the light bulb kind of went off for us. It's like, look, the shredding sale is nothing like a medical waste sale. It's mm. not as time consuming. We, there's something we can close on the phone most of the time. And if not on the phone in the next few days, people are not right. as worried about a contract as they are right. a medical waste contract. We have plans in place to, you know, we look at being able to look at all of his year end data to bring someone in in Q2 to uh, basically replicate what he's doing. Interesting. So is your internal specialist and maybe more of those as you grow, are they given what you just said, dialing the phone call is a much easier place to do it. Are they going out? Like, are they going out and doing meetings? Are they on the road at all? You ask all the right questions because you've done it before. And, and so after he had been in, we kind of held the reins on him for six months. The last three months of the year, we intentionally scheduled him two days a week on the road. And, and in that we had to have, you know, we've got a certain number of meetings he has to have every day. And so there's a lot of parameters set. It's just not go out there and run around. Right. So it's got to be focused. It's got to be strategic. You can go to Will's point. We know where we want to grow. And there, the sheer numbers of shredding customers outweighs the medical waste 400%. And right. so right. that was a, an eye opener for him. He had never done outside sales. So we'd have a few accounts set up with appointments that he had talked to. And then you're like, Hey, there's 20 people up and down the road, you know, you just go poke your head in and that's his, and you start prospecting, you know, in that way as well. Interesting. So he'd come back in a day with 25 different prospects and he could then follow up 
Now, if we step back to you, you guys as the partners and leaders in the business, are you managing this through your CRM system, like monitoring activity, or is that coming out of a scorecard? So how are you monitoring? Because you run a big business, 30 people, that's one person that you're talking about. I realize this is only one strategy we're talking about here, right. but you undoubtedly have a big business that's, you know, you guys are running ragged with. How do you monitor the success of this person? Obviously by sales, but, you know, are you monitoring leading indicators, activity? What What's the yes. monitoring process? The short answer to that is yes, inside the CRM. The CRM is a heartbeat for everything we do, from operations to sales. And so his number of activities is charted every day. The calls are charted every day. Emails, we look at everything. At the end of the day, the CRM is just a huge data platform that we can go pull all of the key indicators that we need to see what his activity is. And not only from a watchdog standpoint, but from a growth standpoint and to show, Hey, here's what we've been telling you a sales pipeline will do as you get your pipeline full is it's always going to be feeding you. So if you'll work the system and, you know, Will and I did this with Miles, our sales manager, and the light bulb goes off one day when they go, Oh, wow. I called him this guy eight months ago and I fixed to sign him up. Yeah. That's so, a beautiful thing when you, when you make that realization, isn't it? True. Like, oh, wow, this thing works. Right. Run the numbers. So part of my goal on this show is to actually, with every show, and my gosh, this is such a great strategy that you've implemented, especially when the world believes the only thing that matters is Google. It's really, I, I think it's such a powerful thing, but without giving away the farm, like what kind of impact has this had? I get a sense that it's obviously producing something, but, and I, I'm not asking you to tell me the specifics, but generally speaking, have you made more than 10,000 from this approach? Uh, we have. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so just, so, I'll give you some rough numbers. Tom. Okay. So in 2020, it was our yep. first full year of doing shred sales. A lot of that was the inbound or the pulling. We averaged seven recurring contracts a month and four purges a month. In 21, okay. We averaged 17 recurring contracts a month and 15 purge contracts a month. And this thread specialist had 99 on his own had, in nine months, had 99 recurring contracts and had 95 purge contracts. Dang. On his, and, and that was in nine months. And so this year, we're year to date, we're averaging 22 recurring contracts and 25 purge contracts. Unbelievable. It's been a good investment. That's a seriously good return on investment. And the the flip side of that is from Will's standpoint, a lot of this, this purge business, they've had to do uh, a lot of adjustments in the back of me. We're doing a lot of a thousand and two thousand box purges that are taken, you know, and we already had the trucking in place, but where it's a 18 wheeler or two or three to go get these purges along with the manpower and the staging of all that. You know, it's easy for us to sit over here and say, Hey, well, we did, you know, we did 85 purges, but one of the things that Will and I learned early on is the answer to us always was sell more, but then you got to go get it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a system that's dynamically connected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So quick question, because I think it's such an important lesson. The ROI is huge, obviously, but. If you were to say to another shredder how to think about this, a fellow yeah. shred operator, and they were about to do this, because because one of the frustrating things many people face is sales reps are really difficult to manage and monitor. Did mm -hmm. you get lucky with the person you got, or it, you talked enough about a system that it sounds like it it wasn't left a chance to this person to come in and just throw spaghetti at the wall? They knew what they were doing. Right. Well, I look and I. Will, we both talked about our average on hiring uh, the right employee and anybody that's been in business for themselves knows sometimes that's a challenge. Yep. So yes, there, yep. there is a little bit of luck in having the right personality and somebody that will yep. come in and go to work every day. However, Will and Miles, before I came into business is when we brought Pipe Drive on as the CRM program and they worked in it for three years or more before I got in here. But now, yes, there is a seat for this, but it's a defined seat. Right. And it's a, and it's a well-defined seat. Yeah. And so I, I think if you're, the more you manage it and the more detail that you can put all of it, the more successful that you're going to be. Would you agree, Will? Yeah, I do. And, and one thing I'd say about that as well, it's, it's a good uh, indicator if they're a good fit and they're being successful. It's also a good indicator if they're not such a great fit. 
and they're not being successful. And yeah. it makes that conversation very easy to have because we've obviously had a lot of people come and go, but that's a really nice thing about the system also. Yeah. So it sounds like the system provides the right seat for a person who's going to f- blossom in it. it. It's both. So to people who say bring in a, an inside sales rep or a sales rep for shredding and they just leave it to chance, uh, it's <laughs> often a failure, but a person connected to a process that is persistent. Dang, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Wow, three P just came <laughs> rolling out of my mouth there. That was. I want to write that down. You know, I, you I might want to write that down. I, I want to add to that, Tom. Is that we've started? We've gotten away from doing a person in a position and doing a position. Mm. And you know, we've talked about that in the past, but that's a big deal. John and I were talking about that just yesterday on, a, on another yep. position within the business, and that's very important. And it makes yeah. it easy to easier to hire and easier to yep. be successful. Yeah, that's so good. So good. Well, guys, this literally is so powerful. And I, I'm really grateful you you have opened the kimono and really shared in a really significant way. And I think it's such a cool opportunity. I think anybody who hears this can take a whole lot of lessons that are worth at least $10,000 for their business from 20 minutes of hearing you. So thank you for that. It, you both mentioned earlier, and it just kind of came up, and I, I got to shift the subject matter just a bit, but neurospine and EMT medical devices. And, uh, Will, I found that in your LinkedIn profile. I think you were with Stryker, and John, looks like you had your own business and respirators, wheelchairs, home dialysis systems, and monitoring systems. How the heck do you take that and turn it into a medical waste company? And then I know medical people out there who are in the medical but they don't often jump into building a medical waste business and a shredding business. So in brief, what's the correlation or what happened there? Like usually guys in medical device sales are suit guys and they're like, (laughs) they're hanging out with physicians and now you're doing something really cool, but it's different. So any reason for that shift? I wish I had a real smart answer to come up for okay. you right now. Just right. say, hey, Tom, this is what yeah. both of us, I think, got tired of the corporate world. And got it. Will was traveling an unbelievable amount. And uh, I was in surgery all the time. And my schedule was I was on call. And we both just wanted to, you know, do something to have a lifestyle change. And it was that to get to somewhat of a normal lifestyle, get away from the corporate world, build a business based on what our values were and what our core principles are. So cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I'd say it's, it's amazing how it all came together through independent paths. And then, and I ended up calling yeah. John one day is kind of joking and said, would you like to get in the medical waste business? They said, well, it's interesting you say that. They went from there. And oh, that's we, so and, cool. and here we sit. Yeah. And here you sit with that's 35 right. odd staff, uh, depending on the day it is. And, uh, you have created a machine that sounds really amazing that probably back in the days of selling medical devices, you never anticipated where you are today. And so I want to congratulate you on a wicked cool adventure that sounds like you've been in and really appreciate you sharing the inside scoop of what you're doing in your business to grow up significantly. So thanks for your time today, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Always good to talk to you. Thanks again for listening to the Shred Coach Podcast with Tom Adams. Make sure to tune in every week for a brand new $10,000 strategy or idea from trusted shredding and business professionals.